Thank you, musicians. A big welcome to all of you this morning. It's lovely to see you all, and especially any visitors that are here who are here for the first time or infrequent, and hope you have a lovely time and enjoy it, and enjoy the friendship of all of the regu regular congregation. And welcome, too, to those who are watching on YouTube uh, through, the, uh, through the streaming. Uh, and, and finally, the welcome to... Uh, Laurie Bond, who is going to lead us in our worship this morning. Some of you may recognise Laurie from days of, days of old, when he was uh, vicar in Takeley about 15 years ago. Um, I'm particularly grateful that Laurie's made the journey over from Wal Walton on the Nose. Yeah. So we're very fortunate uh, that Laurie's with us this morning to lead us. Over to you, Laurie. Thanks very much. Yes, it's good to be with you uh, here this morning, and uh, welcome to you all. Uh, every time I look around, there are a few more faces I recognise, uh, even some from my uh, former church in, in Takeley. Uh, I tried to retire about 10 years ago, but uh, I've found myself area dean of St. Osith now, uh, so uh, I haven't quite escaped yet. But it's good to be able to come back and be with you here. I think it's about 15 years since the last time I took a service here, so uh, uh, many of you will be new to me. Let's turn to our worship here this morning as we come before God today. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Shall we stand as we sing our opening hymn today, Build Your Kingdom Here.
much. Now, I believe this is where the uh, children uh, disappear off to their group. So, shall we just uh, remember them as uh, they go? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our young folk here. And as they go off to their group, may they have a fun time and learn more about Jesus as they do so. Thank you for the leaders who guide them uh, and bless them in all that they do. For we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We turn now to uh, say sorry to God and we just have a moment of quiet. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. We join in saying together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for today. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do be seated now for our first reading. your attention. At page 310, the first lesson is written in the second book of Samuel, chapter 7, beginning at the first verse. After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies round him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a palace of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. That night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord said. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be a ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men of the earth. 
and I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people shall not oppress them any more as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand now as we sing our next uh, hymn together, Mighty to Save.
standing for our uh, next reading. The Gospel reading is from the book of Mark, chapter 6, starting at the 30th verse, and it can be found on page 1011 in the Church Bibles, 1011. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns, or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now may I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do be seated. The uh, musical director of a choir once said that in order to make music, there are two important things. One is the notes, and the other are the rests. The spaces in between the notes. And of the two, he would often say that the rests are obviously more important. It's the rests that give the music its character, its dynamic and its direction. Without the rests, the music would become rather oppressive and boring. And of course, the same can be true about life itself. Without the rests, our life can become a burden. We lose our dynamism and direction. And the rest aren't interruptions and pa- or pauses, they're part of the music itself. As those uh, with children and grandchildren will know, we're at the end of a school year, coming towards our peak holiday season. I met a head teacher during the week who was counting off the last few school plays, sports days, etc., before collapsing in a heap this weekend. And there'll be some exhausted teachers and staff around looking forward to that break. But at the same time, many parents will be thinking, well, I've now got to juggle all my normal weekly commitments along with entertaining the children. And some are probably worried about the cost of doing that at times because it can be expensive for them. Those working in places like hospitals and doctors and dentists are always busy with the huge demands on their services, uh, wanting their skills and expertise and time. So many of those, and in other professions, are also exhausted. But since the pandemic, some people have managed to 
uh, work remotely rather than going into offices or their usual workplaces. Some see that as an advantage. Uh, others see it as um, an even bigger chance to go and lie on some foreign beach and work remotely. But I know that uh, having worked from home for many years, it's very easy to just slide into the study, uh, turn the computer on, and before you know, you're working once again when you know you should be resting. And Jesus tries to set boundaries uh, and limits. He said yes many times, but he also said no many times. And when the demands on him got too great, um, and he found himself physically and spiritually exhausted, he would try and withdraw to a private place. He recognised that there was a need to stop from time to time, to reflect and pray and to nourish his life. After all, he was God, but he was also human. And along with that came the physical needs of uh, nourishment and rest. So there can be an uneasy balance between meeting people's needs and uh, having a time for retreat. If we want to be like Jesus, we have to be moved by people's pain and try to do whatever we can to ease that. But at the same time, we try and give a clear explanation of the gospel to them. How we do this for each of us will be uh, slightly different because the answers will be different for each one of us. The answer will depend on the gifts that God has given to us. But Jesus displayed uh, concern for practical matters. De uh, despite the fact that he was tired, he ministered to the needy souls because they needed some spiritual leadership. Jesus showed compassion by staying with them to teach them. And compassion arises within Jesus when he sees uh, the same sign in the cross uh, in the crowd that he sees with sheep that are in need of a shepherd. They were lost, hysterical, wandering aimlessly and hopeless. So Jesus understood their need and responded with compassion. And we too can be the same. When we're left on our own, to our own devices, we can sometimes feel defenceless. We're not united. Each and every one tries to do our own thing. So we're vulnerable, just like sheep who are in need of a shepherd. But Jesus tried to help people without taking advantage of them. He helped them by teaching them, organising them, speaking with them, and feeding them. He taught them many things to build up the foundation that would sustain them when life was hard and when he was no longer going to be with them in person. But the people wanted miracles because they believed that they couldn't meet their own needs. But Jesus kept asking them to feed each other. He kept telling them that they could meet their own needs in one another and find fullness of life as they, that they sought in one another. But they needed to believe in themselves. And often today we're still looking for miracles. Sometimes we can't uh, believe that we can meet our own needs. But in reality, we can help one another to meet needs in each other. We can find fullness of life when we come together for fellowship and worship. And we can believe in ourselves. Now, Jesus doesn't discriminate when it comes to healing. He doesn't sort out the easy diseases or the desirable people. What he looks for is a sign of faith and determination. He doesn't force healing on anyone, nor does he reward those who play games. He even uh, healed those who were thankless. Remember the story of the ten lepers. Jesus healed all of them, but only one of them turned round and went back to him and said, thank you. So Jesus set us the example of caring 
and we as members of the church need to follow his example. The church needs to have the same sort of reputation today. We need to address both the spiritual and the physical needs of the people. So we need to be a servant church. If we want to lead like Jesus did, we have to touch and change the lives of those who are around us. We have to be aware of the needs of others around us and use our resources to meet those needs as best we can. And we need to have compassion for other people. We mustn't see others as being an interruption to our lives. We must see them as an opportunity to reveal God's love and care and compassion in order to meet their needs. We have to see God as God sees them, sheep who in, are, are in need of a shepherd. And the best way to know that uh, is we're looking at the life of God is to see how uh, Jesus treated others. And that will be a true test of our uh, spiritual maturity. Jesus had great compassion for the crowd that ran after them, but he also had compassion for his disciples. His disciples just returned from a long and arduous uh, ministry trip, so he told them to rest for a while. They didn't have time to eat. But discipleship has to strike a balance between service and renewal, and without this uh, balance, the stress can be debilitating. All of us need time alone with Christ. Only he can heal and renew our bodies. This is especially true because of new technology. We have instant access for one another, but we can't escape this access. Sometimes we need to take a Sabbath or a sabbatical from technology, just like we need to take a Sabbath and spend time with God. Our Christian life is a marathon, not a sprint. We need to have endurance to reach our heavenly rest. And we need diligence in serving the Lord and diligence to take time to rest. If we don't take time to rest, we begin to come apart physically. And medicine tells us that many of our physical problems are as a result of lack of rest. We'll come apart spiritually if we don't take time for spiritual renewal and time with God. When we come away to our own deserted places, we're renewed and refreshed by God's love. Some churches and individuals make use of our diocesan retreat house down at Pleshy. And I remember when I was local here, we used to uh, meet at uh, Rosemary Drew's house uh, in the garden, which was part of the Quiet Gardens project. And the clergy would meet there once a week for prayer. But you may also have a place where you can get a few moments of quiet and rest away from the rest of uh, the family or neighbours. You might have a part of the house where you can go and just be still for a while rather than being caught up in the busyness of everyday life. God is with us in our joys and in our trials, and he's going to be with us until the end. And Jesus looks on with compassion as he teaches us that each one of us belongs to him. We can go on in our daily lives and share God's love and his truth. So Jesus means compassion. He knows what our needs are. And sometimes he needs to save us from ourselves. We need Jesus to do more for us than what we hope or imagine he ought to be doing in any given situation. And his compassion and authority will help us to get through the storms of life. They will also cast out our sin-filled nature. We'll be cleansed and made pure and we'll have access to God who loves us so very much. So Jesus is available to each one of us. His presence is sure, his strength is positive, he fills the emptiness of our lives, and we serve a compassionate God. 
So when we come to a deserted place, God welcomes us with his healing and peace. He renews us and sends us out to share the gifts that he's given to each one of us with the world around us. When we get tired, we come to God for rest and refreshment, and then the cycle continues. Churches are called to be places where we can find rest and refreshment. And I know this church provides an experience of God's grace, peace and healing when we're renewed by the church. We can go out into the world to show God's love and compassion to a hurting world. Some verses from Matthew 11 say, uh, where Jesus says, Come to me, all who, are labor, uh, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. So I wonder, have you come to church today weighed down with problems or exhausted from all your work and commitment? Perhaps you're one of those that are about to collapse after a busy time, whether it be school or work or anything else you've been up to. And we can bring those things that weigh us down and we can lay them at the foot of Christ's cross. There's also time later uh, both during communion and uh, after the service, to receive prayer for healing both for yourself and for others. So may we take this opportunity as we've gathered here today to rest in God's presence and to seek his strength and encouragement. Amen. So let us stand now as we declare our faith. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now shall we sit as we're led in prayer today. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. God our Father, may our relationship with you be our priority. Help us to listen as to when to be and when to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God our Father, we pray for the world. We pray for more and more people to hear you calling. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will refresh you. We pray for our community. As the summer holidays approach, we give you thanks for our teachers and all who work for the benefit of others. And we pray for our messy church this afternoon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray to you, dear Father, for the church. We pray that love be the hallmark. Give us the courage to live in this way so that your will be done, your kingdom come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring to the safe place of your love and understanding those for whom we have concern. 
Gwyn, Sandra, Shirley, the Warmington family, Jilly, Josephine, and little William. We pray for those missing somebody they deeply love. In moments of quiet, we remember others on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the marriage of Chris Badley and Andrea Higgs, and we pray for Luke Best and Caris Jones getting married next week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dearest Father, may the seeds of love blossom the walls of prejudice wilt, all that is good flourish as we journey together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand now as we share together in the peace? God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Shall we offer one another a sign of peace? We remain standing for our offertory hymn, How Great Is Our God.
The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and your and love your creation. You gave your Son Jesus Christ to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did, in him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. So great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with your saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God's holy gifts to God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. All are welcome to receive communion. Uh, do come forward for either communion or a blessing if you would wish to.
kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the girls for even in your suffering you are to the other side knowing this is our salvation jesus for our sake you died Shall we join in saying together the prayer after communion? Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. I saw the children reappearing. Uh, have we, uh, the children or leaders uh, want to come and show us or tell us what they've been up to? 
or shouldn't we know? <laughs> That's all right. What we lost. Sorry, what was that? All right. So, well done, all of you, and thank you for keeping them uh, busy and doing some teaching while you've been out there. We're going to stand and sing our. Uh, oh, right. Old notices, right. Sorry. Haven't got on, on my. Uh, oh, yes. Just a few quick notices. Um, first of all, just to bring to your attention the service of prayer and worship tomorrow evening here at half past seven. Uh, and it might just be that quiet place for you to recharge the batteries. Um, also, next Sunday at 5.30 at Barnston Lodge, there's the soiree, uh, which is uh, a great evening of beautiful music, beautiful live music, uh, a really nice social occasion in the lovely settings of Bonston Lodge. Um, it's a really nice uh, evening, it's 5.30 next Sunday, and if you follow the link on the notices, uh, you'll be able to buy tickets there for it and get your place. Um, and I think that they'd really love more people from St Mary's to, to come and join them there. Uh, looking further ahead now to the 23rd of August, there's going to be a hymns and pims evening. So it's a Friday at five o'clock, where it's a chance to uh, share drinks and snacks and have a chat, but also to sing some of your favourite hymns. How on earth do you know what my favourite hymns are, I hear you saying? Well, we don't. You have to tell us. So please, to nominate a hymn that... Um, I think, Will, you'll be playing there on Friday the 23rd of August. You have to tell Elizabeth. Elizabeth, would you like to stand up and make yourself known? Who's about to go on holiday for three weeks, so tell her quickly, or else use the email and WhatsApp channels. Uh, and, and really, thank you. Uh, thank you to Laurie to leading your service, and I hope you can have a well-deserved rest yeah. now. Uh, and last of all, please do stay to, for coffee and biscuits at the back of the church, uh, a chance to, to meet up with old friends or maybe make new friends. Thanks very much. I always get things in the wrong order when I go somewhere else. So. Keeping to form anyway. Let's try standing now to sing our final hymn, Cornerstone. Weak man. 
for God's blessing upon each one of us as we go from here today. So now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Oh!